This is what the UFC featherweight rankings looked like in February of 2013. This is after Jose Aldo transitioned from WEC champion to UFC champion, defeated the likes of Mark Hominick, Kenny Florian, Chad Mendez, and had just beaten Frankie Edgar. So today we are going to take a trip down memory lane and see how we got from February 2013, these rankings, to where we are today. Let's go. Cub Swanson gets the decision win over Dustin Poirier. He moves up one spot to number five. And then a random shuffle puts Frankie Edgar one spot of Chan Sung Jung, who moves down to fourth. Chad Mendez TKOs Darren Elkins, doesn't change anything. Cub Swanson knocks out Dennis Seaver, that puts him up one more spot to number four in the rankings. Then Frankie Edgar gets a decision win over Charles Oliveira, that doesn't change anything. Then Jose Aldo stops Chan Sung Jung. That doesn't change anything in the rankings, but Aldo does defend his title. And then neither of these guys are in the rankings, but let's note Conor McGregor gets a decision win over Max Holloway. That, that's a fight between two important guys that might appear in the rankings in the future. I guess we'll see. Chad Mendez, TKO's Clay Guida, doesn't change anything. Chad Mendez then gets a decision win over Nick Lentz, doesn't change anything again. And at the end of 2013, this is what the featherweight rankings look like. You have Dennis Seaver falling to 7th, you have Dustin Poirier now up to 6th, and pretty much the same cast of characters in the top 5. Not a whole lot changed, Cub Swanson did work his way up, but again, 2013, not the most exciting time in the featherweight division. I don't think the same can be said about 2014 though, so let's roll into it. Jose Aldo starts off the year with a decision win over Ricardo Lamas. That bumps Lamas down one spot and Edgar now at number two. Lamas, after the loss, went ahead and TKO'd Hakron Diaz. That doesn't change anything though. Cub Swanson then gets a decision win over Jeremy Stevens. That bumps him all the way up to number two, dropping both Lamas and Edgar. Frankie Edgar in the trilogy fight gets a third win over BJ Penn. That bumps him back up to the number two spot. And then we start the McGregor era in the featherweight rankings. Conor McGregor gets a TKO win over Diego Brandao. That bumps Jeremy Stevens off the top 10 and Conor McGregor into the number 10 spot. And then a random shuffle throughout the entire division moves a bunch of people around spots. Dennis Bermudez gets a submission win over Clay Guida, drops Guida from the rankings, and Bermudez takes his spot at number seven. Conor McGregor then gets a TKO win over Dustin Poirier, entering the top five of the UFC featherweight rankings and dropping Dustin Poirier down to seven. Jose Aldo then gets a decision win over Chad Mendez. Amazing fight, but they're champion in number one, so nothing changes. Ricardo Lamas gets a submission win over Dennis Bermudez. That doesn't change anything in the rankings. Frankie Edgar then submits Cub Swanson. That puts him back above Cub Swanson and drops Swanson to number four. We have to say goodbye to the Korean zombie. He has to report to Korean military duty for two years. Goodbye Chan Sung Jung. Everybody else moves up a spot. And this is what the UFC featherweight rankings look like at the end of 2014. Obviously the standout is Conor McGregor going from not being in the top 10 all the way to number 5. We might have to keep an eye on this kid. Looks like he's got a lot of momentum going into 2015. Will he be able to capitalize? We also have Dennis Bermudez and Charles Oliveira joining the top 10 of the rankings. Conor McGregor wastes no time in 2015, gets a TKO victory over Dennis Seaver, bumping him ahead of Cub Swanson to get the number 4 ranking. Chad Mendez then TKOs Ricardo Lamas, that bumps Lamas down one spot, and now McGregor's all the way up to number three. Then a young Hawaiian kid named Max Holloway. Remember how I mentioned him before? Well, he gets a submission win over number five ranked Cub Swanson, makes his way to the top five of the UFC featherweight rankings. And then Frankie Edgar gets a decision win over Uri Faber. I actually forgot that this fight happened, but it did nothing for the ranking, so maybe that's why. And then, Conor McGregor TKO's Chad Mendez to win the interim featherweight championship. He moves up to the number one spot and Mendez down to number three. Max Holloway TKO's Charles Oliveira. That doesn't change anything in the rankings. 
Ricardo Lamas gets a decision win over Diego Sanchez, doesn't change anything. And then one night before Aldo McGregor, Frankie Edgar knocks out Chad Mendez, an amazing knockout, but it doesn't change where he is in the rankings because they're number two and three. So can't get much better than that when two champions are about to fight. And then right before those two champions are about to fight on the same card, Max Holloway gets a decision win over Jeremy Stevens, bumps himself up to the number four spot. And in the champion versus champion fight, Conor McGregor knocks out Jose Aldo. He is now the UFC featherweight champion. And this is what the UFC featherweight division looks like at the end of 2015. Of course, McGregor became champion. He's the big story of the year, but Max Holloway, not to be outdone, rises from the bottom of the rankings all the way up to number four. Now, if you're excited to see what Conor McGregor does in 2016, you might want to hold your horses. You'll see. Now, before we go any further, just want to say, if you like the video, please go down and give us a like and consider subscribing to MMA Nation. It really helps the channel out and it allows me to keep producing these videos. They take a real long time to make, so any type of love would be appreciated. All right, back to 2016. Let's go. And in 2016, Conor McGregor gets submitted by Nate Diaz in a welterweight fight. Has nothing to do with the featherweight rankings, but he does lose his first fight in the UFC. Meanwhile, Max Holloway gets a decision win over Ricardo Lamas. That bumps him up one more spot to number three. We also get a random shuffle of Stevens and Bermudez. Brian Ortega, a young T-City, gets the KO win over Clay Guida. In the third round, he bumps up to the number 10 position. Jose Aldo then gets a decision victory over Frankie Edgar at UFC 200, wins the UFC featherweight interim title. That doesn't change anything though in the rankings. And then one of the pound for pound kings of the UFC, USADA, defeats Chad Mendez. He is suspended for two years and that means he is off the featherweight rankings. Cub Swanson gets a decision victory over Kawajiri, doesn't change anything. Conor McGregor then avenges his first loss in the UFC, gets a decision win over Nate Diaz, that doesn't change anything in the featherweight division. And McGregor is still yet to defend his featherweight title. Anthony Pettis, former lightweight champion, enters the featherweight division, gets a submission victory over Charles Oliveira, and bumps all the way up to the number six position. Charles Oliveira then gets submitted again, this time against Ricardo Lamas. That doesn't change anything. Frankie Edgar then gets a decision win over Jeremy Stevens. Doesn't change anything. And then Conor McGregor knocks out Eddie Alvarez. He is now the UFC lightweight champion. Double champ, first in UFC history. Great accomplishment for Conor McGregor. Doesn't change anything though in the featherweight rankings, although it will. And it does because Conor McGregor is stripped of his UFC featherweight title, promoting Jose Aldo to the UFC featherweight championship and promoting Max Holloway versus Anthony Pettis as an interim title fight. Yes, this is all very confusing, but it happened. It was weird. It didn't make sense, but Conor McGregor was stripped. Aldo is now champion and we'll see who wins between Max Holloway and Anthony Pettis. But before we do, Cub Swanson gets a decision victory over Duho Choi. One of the most incredible fights that I've seen live. I was there as a media member. Doesn't change the rankings, but had to note that fight. It was beautiful. And then Max Holloway, TKO's Anthony Pettis, wins the UFC featherweight interim title and gets himself to the number one spot. And this is what the UFC featherweight rankings look like at the end of 2016. Obviously a lot has changed, Conor McGregor is no longer the champion, Jose Aldo back as champion, and Max Holloway up to the number one spot holding the UFC interim championship. And then we look at the bottom of the division and we have two prospects in Brian Ortega and Yair Rodriguez. It'll be interesting to see over the next two years where they end up in the rankings, so keep an eye out on both of them. And let's start off with Yair Rodriguez knocking out the legend BJ Penn. That moves him up two spots to the number eight position. 
And then Chan Sung Jung returns from military duty in epic fashion, knocking out Dennis Bermudez. He is now number seven in the rankings. A random shuffle puts Jair Rodriguez and Chan Sung Jung both up a spot. Charles Oliveira decides to go to the lightweight division. He drops off of the featherweight rankings. Ortega and Bermudez both up a spot. Renato Moicano then gets a decision win over Jeremy Stevens. Drops Jeremy Stevens all the way down to number eight. And Moicano doesn't get a top 10 ranking. Interesting. Cub Swanson then gets a decision victory over Artem Lobov. Nothing changes. Frank Yeager TKO Jair Rodriguez. Nothing changes. And then interim champion Max Holloway defeats Jose Aldo, becoming the undisputed UFC featherweight champion. And with that, Pettis sees no shot at beating the champion. I'm joking, but he does go back to the lightweight division, bumping everybody else up one and giving Moicano the number nine spot. Darren Elkins then gets a decision victory over Dennis Bermudez. He makes his way back to the top 10 of the division. Ricardo Lamas then gets a TKO victory over Jason Knight doesn't change anything. And then Brian Ortega gets a submission win over Moicano, bumps up two spots to the number six position. Jeremy Stevens then gets a decision victory over Gilbert Melendez, doesn't change anything. Max Holloway made sure that the win over Aldo wasn't a fluke, he defeats Jose Aldo again, doesn't change anything, and Holloway remains the champion. Brian Ortega submits Cub Swanson. He is now the number four ranked featherweight in the UFC. And then to end off the year, Josh Emmett knocks out Ricardo Lamas. Emmett all the way up to number four and Lamas now down to number six. And this is what the UFC featherweight rankings look like at the end of 2017. I told people to keep your eye on Ortega or Rodriguez. Ortega, obviously the more successful year, getting up to number three, Holloway winning the UFC featherweight championship, and Josh Emmett coming out of nowhere on the last fight in the featherweight division of the year gets the number four ranking. And now we are entering the current year 2018. A lot has happened in the division in 2018, so this will be a nice refresher for those of you who are just picking back up on the featherweight division. Why is this guy here? Who is this guy? Don't worry, I've got your back. Here we go, 2018. Right off the bat, Jeremy Stevens gets a TKO victory over Duho Choi, bumps up to number eight, and Rodriguez, oddly enough, falls two spots. Darren Elkins then submits former lightweight Michael Johnson. That doesn't change anything in the rankings. What does change things is Jeremy Stevens knocks out Josh Emmett, dropping Josh Emmett out of the top five, and Jeremy Stevens back into the top five. And then a big one, Brian Ortega knocks out Frankie Edgar. He now climbs to the number one contendership position in the featherweight division. Then Moicano gets a decision victory over Calvin Qatar, making his return to the top 10. Frankie Edgar then gets a decision victory over Cub Swanson, dropping Swanson down to number five, and Stevens up now to number four. And then Lamas continues on his hard times, loses to Bechtick, drops from the rankings, and Bechtick all the way up to number seven. And then Chad Mendes returns from suspension, gets a TKO victory over Miles Jury, and is now ranked number seven. Then Jose Aldo gets a TKO victory over Jeremy Stevens, a huge win for Jose Aldo. It doesn't change the rankings though. But then Moicano submits Cub Swanson, drops both Stevens and Swanson down in the rankings. Moicano all the way up to number four, and Chad Mendez gets a boost too for some reason, up to number five. And this is what the UFC featherweight rankings look like today. When I said things changed in 2018, I wasn't lying. We have Moicano and Mendez, both now in the top five. You have Swanson down to number seven. You have Mirsaw Bektik at number nine. Ricardo Lamas off of the rankings. A lot has happened so far in 2018, and we still have a couple more months to go. So it'll be interesting to see how the featherweight division changes in the next couple of months. The UFC featherweight rankings have definitely gone through an interesting change over the past five years. You saw the rise of Conor McGregor, who then departed, then the rise of Max Holloway, who is the current champion. You saw some younger guys who have been able to climb to the top of the division, like Brian Ortega or Moicano. 
but then you see the names like Chad Mendez and Frankie Edgar and Jose Aldo still in the top five. It'll be interesting to see if those fighters who have established themselves as legends in the featherweight division, if they're going to be able to hold on to that throughout the next year or two, or if their time will come and they'll fall off. Really interesting times in the featherweight division. Be interesting to see where things go from here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like the video if you did in fact like it and subscribe to MMA Nation. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please like and subscribe. And until next time, uh, I'll see you in the rankings.